Hey guys, welcome to another video where we will be talking about a couple of updates we have made since the last one. So recently Figma launched Reviables in their annual conference config 2023 and we are super excited to implement those in our Shipwright UI kit. But first things first, we have a design system course we, where you can learn to build a design system from the ground up and we are always adding a ton of new videos with all the fresh updates. So whether you are a solo designer or a freelancer or you already have a design system in place, we are teaching what exactly we have learned from our mistakes and what you should avoid and what all are the best practices you can implement while creating your design system. So definitely check that out. So jumping back to this video, we have a couple of updates to talk about. First, we're going to talk about design system course. Uh, we have recently added a couple of new videos talking about variables. So if you haven't applied variables to your design system or don't know where to start with variables in your design system, then you should definitely check that design system course out. And we have made some updates recently on those videos. Secondly, we have implemented variables to our Shipwright UI kit. So it's free, it's available on Figma community right now. Definitely try it out. Let us know what you think of those and how can we improve things in there and what are the some of the components that we should have built into those Shipwright UI kit. So we can definitely let us know through the comments and feedbacks and thoughts. Lastly, we have made another contribution to the Figma community with a new resource file for you guys, which is about variables and which I'm gonna talk about in detail um, in my next slide. So let's jump right into that. Okay, so this is the presentation file. Um, this is the file for variables map that we have published to the Figma community and it's free of course. So you definitely check that out. Uh, if you are you know, thinking of implementing variables in your design system, which in our suggestions you should do that. Um, so we have talked about what exactly, you know, variables are. So types of variables where they're basically primitive and semantic, and then there are components of so primitive and semantic. You would be, you know, noticing like most of the companies would be implementing those primitive variables and semantic ones, but there are, you know, large organizations where you can see component with types of variables as well. For example, like Microsoft would be implementing those kind of variables or Adobe would be implementing those kind of component variables. It's more kind of a semantic variable, but it's all more tightly scoped. So these are a couple of basic types of variables. And then we have talked about like what exactly variables are. So again, raw hex squad value. So we have raw hex squad value we will use for our colors and even for the numbers we use generally pixels and all this kind of stuff. But then you can create those hex code value and assign that to a variable. So one variable can only have one raw hex code value. So you will assign those hex code value to a primitive collection, which will be like blue, all your color palette, all your numbers that you are gonna use in your design system, but just giving them the generic naming. Um, then the semantic collection. So you would be creating another collection, which is semantic collection, where you would be assigning the primitive collection value to a semantic collection variable. So for example, I have this button default, button hover state, button active state, disabled, and all those kind of stuff. So you will have all those naming conventions there in the semantic collection. And then you will be assigning the primitive variable collection that you have created. You will be assigning those to the semantic collection as a value. So you can see over here, the semantic variable is button default and the value is primitive variable of blue 400. So this is how it's gonna use. And if you later on, you know, realize like, hey, this is the hex code I wanna change for say button default, you can just change it here or in the primitive collection, you can just change the hex code value of blue 400 and then it can easily be applied to wherever you have used that button default or blue 400. So it's that simple. Styles, styles is pretty simple and straightforward again, like, we were using hex code value in the styles as well, but, and there was a pro point as well where you can apply multiple raw hex code value to a style, whereas on variables, you can just have one. Um, but that was pretty much a straightforward like styles we have already implemented in our design systems. And I guess everyone is using styles, but now you can actually use styles with the help of variables as well. So instead of applying hex code value, you can actually apply semantic variables that you have created to the style. So instead of a hex code value, now I am assigning a semantic variable, which I created button default to a button default style. 
So if say later on you want to change it, anything, you can just again, go back to that primitive collection that you have created where you are using this blue 400. You can just change the hex code value of blue 400 to something else. And the semantic variable will change. And also the style which we're using will also be changed. But um, variables, I would recommend um, using variables over styles as they are more close to what devs code and it will help you a better handoff between design and devs. So before directly start using variables within your components, you need to add variables to the styles to make sure it aligns with what you had and in your components are behaving the way they should. So before you, you know, delete all your styles and start implementing the variables, you should just back up your styles with the variable collection, like the semantic variable collection, for example, something like this. And then you can see like, yeah, everything is working perfectly. What all we had, like the hex code value and everything is perfectly fine. And then we can delete the styles. Okay, so this is a small, you know, um, presentation of difference between styles and variables. So difference between styles and variables is, so styles can have multiple properties, which we have already talked about, um, whereas variables can't. So you can see only one raw hex code value has been assigned to this variable, but in style, you can have like multiple raw hex code values. And another major, major difference between styles and variables is that variables can actually be referenced to other styles or other variables, but styles cannot be referenced. So again, like, if I want to assign a variable to a style or to another variable, for example, we create one primitive collection and then we are creating another semantic collection where we are assigning the primitive collection variable value. So you cannot do that with style. So if I created style A, I cannot reference that style A to another style B or to a variable style or variable A or something like that. So what are some key takeaways from theirs? Um, variables can be used to define other variables and styles, but styles cannot define other either of those. Um, aliasing variables allow for more scalability and ease of management of design tokens, just like, you know, creating multiple collection of variables. That's why it's really helpful. So it helps you grow and have that scalability in your design system. Use variables over styles as they are more close to what devs code and it would be better handoff. So use variables. That's why Figma launched variables, right? And then we have talked about a couple of structures you should be implementing um, for variables you should be implementing in your design system. So for example, you are a solo designer or a freelancer, or maybe in the team of 10 as a design system uh, team. So you are creating a design system for single brand, which is just one brand you have, for example, in our case, it's Shipwright, right? So what we would do is we will have just a one primitive collection and everything will live in one single file. So this is one single file and you can see I have primitive collection, semantic collection, and there will be a number collection of primitive collection. So in the primitive collection, I will have it a group called number and there will be a group called colors. Um, and I will show you an example of Shipwright as well over here in just a couple of minutes. So, and I would reference those in the semantic collection. So in semantic collection, I have a group called radius. Uh, I would be referencing those primitive variables that I created to the semantic ones. So this is one kind of a structure that you can implement in if you have a single brand. So what if you have like multiple brands, but you want to use the same primitive foundation? So let's say um, we want to create, use Shipwright as uh, one of the primitive foundation and then create uh, multiple brands out of it. So like, um, primitive foundation would be a shipwright and based on shipwright, I can create a brand A, I can create brand B and I can create brand C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a foundation file in the shipwright, which would be, you know, all my primitive colors, all my primitive numbers that could be used for each and individual brands. So for example, if blue is something I want to use for brand A, then purple is another for brand B. I will add all those colors to the foundation file of this one file. So there will be one file called foundation file. And based on those foundation file, I will have two another foundations where I would be creating semantic variables. So because I have already established my primitive variables in the foundations file, I don't have to create a new primitive collection variables for those brands. So I would be directly creating a semantic brand, a color, the brand a radius in all those different groups. And then I would be just referencing those primitive 
uh, variables that I've created in the foundation file and would be referencing those in the brands A and brand B. So for example, over here, you can see a button default. I'm using blue 400 in brand A, whereas for brand B, I'm using button default for blue 500. So there is two different colors, but already I have established those variables, primitive variables in the foundation file. I don't have to create it again in those different brands files. Um, this is a great example. So Ford Motors have done something like this. Uh, they have created this one foundation file where they have established all their design tokens and primitive variables. And then they have like a Lincoln and Ford uh, different kind of two brands within their ecosystem. So they are using two different files and using the same foundation file for that. So that is one of the examples. Um, then there is the last option where you will be creating multiple brands, but you want to have multiple primitive foundations. And this is generally, uh, you know, used within a company which is a really large organization. For example, like Microsoft, right? Microsoft has Microsoft Teams and there is an Xbox team and there is different, like they all have a proper different brands. And it would be really hard for them to have just one foundation file for each one of the brands that they have. Because again, the color style is different. They have shadows or not and all those kind of stuff. So it would be really hard for them to actually maintain one single file. So it would be great call to actually have a primitive foundation file for a brand and then create another file for semantic variable collection. And this is what exactly the example is all about. So over here, we have created this foundation file for brand A. You can say it's for Microsoft Teams. And I have created all the primitive colors and numbers. And then in the semantic collection for the same brand, which is Microsoft Teams, I'm going to use and reference those primitive collection variables I have created in another file. We'll reference those in the semantic collection file. Similarly, for say Xbox, I have established those primitive collection variables in one file, which is the foundations file. And then I would be using those and referencing the variables created in those files to the semantic collection file. Um, this is the couple of structures that you can follow. I hope that was useful. So this is all about like what exactly variables are, how you you know assign export value to the variables, and then why we want to use variables over styles. What exactly is the difference, and what are some basic you know structure that you can actually. Um, have a look at and would be the best suitable for you guys. So totally depends on uh, which kind of architecture or structure that you guys want to follow. Use that for your variables mapping. And this is an example I was talking about for Shipwright, what exactly we have done. So let me zoom it a bit over here. Um, you can see over here, we have this primitive collection. So this is again, we are using uh, design system structure A for a single brand. So um, we are using this single brand A design system design system structure. So over here in the one single file, we have primitive collection. And in primitive collection, we have color and number as two groups created. So in colors, we will have all our colors like blue, purple, green for, you know, uh, warning for yellow, red danger, and all this kind of stuff. So we'll have all the color palette over here. And then we will have a number group, which would be, you know, all the numbers that we might be using in future or we are using in the components and all this kind of stuff. Then we will create another semantic collection. So we have created the semantic collection where we have color, radius, gap as group. Um, and in those we have created, we have been using modes as well. So we created like light mode and dark mode. And in light and dark mode, we have assigning the primitive collection variables. As you can see, they are referencing the primitive collection variable that we have created in the primitive collection. And then what we did was after creating our variables, uh, it was time for us to implement those in our components, but we were using styles, right? So this was something like we were using before variables. So we have all the prim primary styles, secondary type, gray, and all those color set that we had. So what I did was uh, we actually implemented all those styles and we actually backed the variables instead of hex code. So we were using hex code in the beginning now we assigned all the hex code to a variable, a semantic collection variable that we created. And we started assigning those semantic collection variables to the styles that we already had. And just wanted to make sure like everything is working fine. Every component is behaving like they should. And there is nothing, you know, any change of UI or anything that, that kind of thing. So once we have tested that out, 
after that we decided you know it's time to delete all the styles so what we did was delete all the styles after backing up them with the variables you can see this is the variable that we have and then we deleted all the styles and what we were left with was variables so again again we want to use variables because again it's really easy for the devs to you know write the code for and it actually bridges the gap between design and the handoff so that was the best that we could do and um that's what we did so now all our components in our shipwright ui kit uh, are using variables uh, there is no styles um, and we have also implemented the number collection uh, variables in our component as well. So you will be able to see those as well in our Shopride UI kit. So I would really recommend, you know, downloading this new update of Shopride UI kit. Try it yourself. If you have any questions, do let us know how we can help. We can record another video for you guys or anything like that. And um, if you want to learn more about design system, um variables how you can implement those and everything like that so i would again definitely check this out design system course by headway design team and we have created a ton of new videos how to get started with variables how to get started with your design system what are some best practices that you can follow within your design team and all those kind of stuff so um definitely check that out and let us know if you have any other thoughts and feedback for us but until next video thank you so much